Welcome, Robo Rimmers, to the adventure of Robo Daddy and his Robo Antimatter Reactors, of which we built, <laughs> I mean, essentially four of them yesterday. I've got to come out swinging. I've got to come out swinging because whenever I say anything about this video game that I'm 100% sure about, people think I'm lying. Uh, and this was the top comment in the comment section yesterday, a top comment at the time of recording. Uh, wealth doesn't affect wave-based survival. The range difficulty can be altered in the mod menu and wave-based survival. It's best just to blah, 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 blah. The important point to take away from that is wealth doesn't affect wave-based survival. Let me introduce you to the Steam Workshop page for... Raid-based survival, where there is a point on it that quite literally says the raid sizes are determined by the number of waves you've survived, as well as the wealth of the colony. We've had the developer themselves on previous episodes comment and say, wealth is a part of it. Sure, it's not the most integral part. Yes, there is that system, but it is relevant. And funnily enough, antimatter reactors tend to add quite a fair amount to colony wealth. So just, just trust me when I say colony wealth does affect it. Thank you. I'll take no further questions on the subject. Please don't lie in the comment section again. Okay. What are we looking at? <laughs> but yeah, no, it is uh, It is actually somewhat relevant. So we've got to bear that in mind as we go ahead here. Now, on the subject of that, I do want to start working on the defenses pretty significantly today. Because we've essentially coaxed through the last sort of four episodes with an identical defense network. And we've gotten quite lucky. We need to make some quite heavy adjustments to that relatively soon. Now, the... Way I'm going to set this up is obviously we're just going to churn out machines and we're going to have them always have a supply of uh, steel components, plastic, whatever we're building the turrets out of near where the turrets come out. So there are IO ports in storage somewhere. And again, I've still got to get used to this new, uh, this new window. We've got uh, obviously the IO ports. We set this input and output. And we can have... Firstly, hauling bots, according to the comment section yesterday, we can have hauling bots haul into those to cut down a massive amount of the hauling time. So we could have them automatically pop out the supplies in the freezer rather than loading it into the storage units, which is basically what they've been doing right now. So we'll try and work on that. We'll put an IO port, an output somewhere over here so that if they need the resources for the turrets, the hauling bots can just run from, say there, for example, over to the turret back and forth rather than going all the way to the storage units and all the way back. So I'll try and implement a system like that today. Um, but in terms of defenses, I don't think we've actually unlocked any new... No, we haven't technically unlocked any new turrets, but we can definitely upgrade what we've got. For example, shredder turrets being near the entrance a little bit more. They don't have the, the biggest range, but they can definitely... They're definitely at this close range be a lot more effective than a military turret, for example. Putting embrasures between all of them so that when one explodes, it's not going to set off a chain reaction. Action. So we'll focus on redoing this. Now, the, here's the big thing. That's, of course, the recipe database. I kind of get how it works, but the way it, it actually works is makes no sense to me. So apparently one recipe database can take any amount of recipes, which, again, doesn't really make much sense, given that the description of the uh, data disk itself is like, oh, it's only got 64 megabytes. That's not very much space or something along those lines. Hang on, I'll find the actual description here. Uh, data disk uh, says... Yeah, apparently it can only hold 64 megabytes. How primitive. I assumed that that was kind of implying that one data disk would take one recipe, which I thought would be a nice balancing feature. Turns out this thing, you can install it into anything. Now, it was also pointed out in the comment section, I can install it next to this and grab the recipe for mining Plasteel and then install that into an assembler. So I feel a little bit kind of vindicated in the fact that I thought this was a lot more complicated than it is as a design balance. Turns out it's just horribly fucking OP. For example, we could put down, um, somebody said this, that there was antimatter workstations that cost like 30,000 power to keep online. All we've got to do is install the recipe database next to it, grab the recipe out of it, and then reinstall it into one of these. And then we've saved ourselves 27,000, sorry, 29,300 watts of power. So you sort of see why I assumed that that was uh, not as powerful as it actually is. But now I know that, we can obviously remove all of this crap and tidy it up quite nicely. I think first things first, then, is we probably want to uh, we, we probably want to do exactly that. We probably want to reinstall the recipe da database here. Grab whatever isn't available on our plasma drill. So that's going to be... What can you not mine? You can't mine uranium, because that's a bonus component. You also definitely can't mine plastic, which is definitely the, the one that we're really after. So I think we'll get that one down. And you can't mine silver, if I'm not mistaken, too. Uh, obviously, silver would be kind of OP because, I mean, it gives you all that buying power. Yeah, so we don't have silver. So I'm going to load onto this silver and plasteel. The other thing as well is, of course, the radiation. We kind of started yesterday, but I didn't really make much progress. And I was kind of putting it on the back burner. But I was sent uh, an image over Discord that kind of shows a setup 
example for the radiators, so it doesn't really matter the order you install it in too much, as long as you have, you know, the radiator plus the radiation chamber and then anything else you want to throw onto that. So what we'll do is I'll, I'll kind of reorganize this when we've got the I.O. port down, uh, just to make it a bit more convenient. We'll reorganize this so that the prisoners are radiated in the most efficient way, because that's what matters here. It's war crimes. We haven't done war crimes for a while, so I feel like I owe you guys a little bit of that. Right, let's go ahead and get this kill box sorted out then. How long have we got? We've got four days, which is going to give us fucking ages before we've really got to worry about what the robot's doing. The, how long have they been inactive for? It's got to be since that last ride. Okay, this has been a day. It's been a day. That's not ideal, but it's not fantastic. So you see, we've got this now. Some bills have been deleted. The smart assembler cannot make them anymore. So as long as we keep them in the recipe database, it doesn't really matter. What's going on there? Oh, that... Oh, that cable's not actually powered. Right, okay, you know what? We'll do that. We'll do that just to be safe in case it auto-connects to the future, because I don't really want to move the auto motor around. So why are you putting that there? No, 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 no. Go find somewhere else to put that. Oh, God, you actually can. Wow. That's, um... <laughs> That's horribly OP. I love it. Anything else we want to import? So we've got steel, copper, aluminium, gold, uranium, jade, and then all the chunks. I assume you can cover all of those... Uh, this one. Genius. Uh, I assume that it can cover all those. It's got all the junks, aluminium, copper, uh, no jade and no gold. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, we'll import those as well. Then there's no reason not to, I guess. Oh, it actually works. Wow. Um, and it's actually quite fast, too. And obviously, this will speed up over time. Holy shit. Uh, yep, there's our plasteel going into the system. We're using it straight away because we've got to get a lot of bills uh, using plasteel right now. We've got a lot of things queued up. Wow, that's nuts. That's insane. High-grade steel gives it hit points of 410. Regular steel gives it hit points of 480? I thought, I mean, that's a little bit strange. I was kind of hoping there would be a direct upgrade, but... Um, what about uranium? I assume we've got a shitload of uranium. Yeah, we've got 6,000 uranium. Wow. Okay. Um, uranium turrets, I assume, are going to have a pretty a pretty chunky amount of hit points. 600. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it'll last us a while anyway, and, and we, to be fair, we could phase out our... Oh, these are man shredded turrets, my bad. Um, we probably want to phase out the nuclear reactors at some stage anyway because they take up a massive amount of, of room and don't really offer much benefit over the other thing that we've got now the antimatter reactor so why don't we put down three of these on each side maybe even four of those on each side wouldn't hurt the only thing i don't really understand with these is there's no way to actually trigger the removal of resources from them they're just automatic right so i assume what we'll need is um yeah the item that you want to pull so I assume what we need is for the for the turret, say, for example, one pulling uranium, one pulling steel, one pulling components. If I'm not mistaken, then we just set like a minimum stack size so you don't pull out too many so there's not enough in the system. I don't think you can only pull one stack at a time. Um, but I assume that's kind of the better way to do things. The production speed goes above 100%. <laughs> how, does, how does that make any sense? Okay, I'm not going to complain because it means that we're going to be able to actually get a grip on a, a good amount of plastic here. We could, in theory, just remove this deep drill now. It's probably good to keep around just to be able to grab more recipes from, but I'll go ahead and remove the actual bill from it for the timing. I'm sure there's more important things that Builder Bot can be doing. Um, the IO port? We might as well leave it there just in case. Just in case anyone needs to haul anything. And I assume that's how it works, right? So, because we've got it linked up there, if someone wants to haul things to that, it's quicker just to dump it into there and be done with it. Um, why are you working out here? Oh, right, because I queued up all of these. Okay, my bad. Yeah, that definitely worked. He made those components and then just dropped them straight in the I.O. port. Cool. Okay, fantastic. With the plasteel production in kind of full, full steam ahead mode, we've got 385 plasteel now. These are producing two antimatter canisters to, per day per... Unless we... What if we... What do we crank up the fuel to maximum on all of them for a start? Because quite clearly we've got some plasteel just kicking around in storage. We can build a couple more of these, right? I mean, there's no reason, no reason not to put down a couple more antimatter producers. Well, let's put them down this side then and keep keep the either side of it clear so that we can build some other buildings if those are relevant. Yeah, and that's going to make a shitload of antimatter. It's not going to make a massive amount, but for the time being, given that we haven't even got floors down, I feel like it's a fair, it's a, it's a fair middle ground. Um, let's put down some tiles then. You know what? I'm sick of my machines working on absolutely nothing. Steel? How much steel have we got? 480? 480? Still? Maybe I better put down another plasma drill or two, because one alone is... Yeah, one alone can't really keep up with the with the demand, can it? So what we've got over here is I've got the I.O. ports. One's grabbing plasteel, steel, components. This one's going to grab advanced components, and then I've got a spare one for potentially gold um, for making advanced components. This thing will automatically make machine frames. This thing will automatically, you know, get our resources, uh, or it can even make some components as well. Actually, speaking of which, let's go ahead and queue those up. Can I copy this? Oh, you can't copy bills over. That's a shame. There we go. Oh, shit. It's working. Nice. So we've got this thing automatically making advanced components now. This thing's waiting for ingredients to be placed. What are you lacking then for your machine frame? 
80 steel, 20 plus steel, two advanced components. Ah, right. Okay, so we get this one pulling in advanced components then. Um, I'm sure there's a better way I can do it, have this thing just convey about it over, for example. But, you know, it's fine. That way we're not running any sort of... Uh, we're not running any sort of overflows or backups along conveyor belts. And then we'll say maximum of five advanced components for this guy. We don't want to pull all of them after all. There we go. So we've got this guy making advanced components. This guy making advanced machine frames. We've got machines making more machines. We need them to be able to craft... Oh, you can't... Right, you can't have one obviously making plasma drills. So we also need those weak AI chips. So I'll go ahead and import that into the hideously overpowered recipe database. I'm currently importing over all of the final things from this machine that can't be made by the furnace. So this can make the machine frame, sure, which is normally what obviously you use this one for. But it can't make the, the drones, the arms, the uh, obviously the, the AI modules, which I've now installed into this one. So it's making weak AI chips. We should be able to put down a few more plasma drills. Yeah, we absolutely can. Cool. Um... Why don't we go ahead and reinstall this one down here, then? We might as well use up... We might as well get these as clustered together as possible, if that makes sense. Um, so can we have them all around? And, and your output all has to be the same square. Can you do it on a diagonal? Oh, we can. Fantastic. So that means we could put a shitload together all rammed. Okay, you know what? Let me, let me plan this out a little bit better. I'll, I'll finish off the, uh, the disc first, and then we'll see how it's going. So what are you missing here? Oh, so it removes the ones that it's already got in the database. Oh, fantastic. The adaptive assembler now has everything from the machine bench added by the factory mod. So we've got everything loaded into that one. Of course, this one's dealing with the other stuff as well. This one's got a lot of extra shit. It's kind of like a furnace plus the ability to add some of the other things. Apparently, it can also produce high-grade steel, which is very nice. Um, so those things are done. Obviously, we've got some robotic arms churning out. We don't really need those. Just figured it was good to have it in the system in case it ever became relevant let's go ahead and put the outputs up in i wanted to kind of shield it a little bit otherwise if enemies break through they could just steal it and and leave and with that we should be able to now very very quickly recover from disastrous raids <laughs> not that that's ever happened okay good shit so we got the three four shredded turrets on both sides went a little bit more concrete i really shouldn't have reinstalled this just as we were coming up to a raid i think that really has kind of slowed things down pretty significantly let's forbid these as well let's forbid these there's not a steal to go around and until we've got a couple more drills set up there's not much point trying to stretch ourselves so things. We're working on antimatter, we're working on redoing the factory, we're working on this, we're working on radiation. It's too much. It's too much for my poor boys. Now I'm going to get Robo Daddy researching these. De no, we don't really want Devastator Mortars in hindsight because I have a feeling we can't use them. Uh, I have a feeling you have to man those. What we do want though is the Vulcan Cannons. These things are essentially a minigun strapped to a giant platform that rips your enemies apart. Oh, and I also want missile turrets. Yeah, let's get those. But do we want missile turrets first? Because that also gives us advanced turrets and heavy turrets. Okay, here's the plan. Here's the plan. Sorry, this is, this is very confusing. Let's go uranium slug turrets. Then we'll go for... What did I say? Uh, turrets? Tur turret, 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 turret. Missile turret, missile turret. Where are they? Missile turrets next. And then we'll go for the Vulcan cannon. Thank you, Spock. Very cool. Okay, so that's that's basically our defenses lineup. Like I said, today is all about working on these defenses, making sure they are not so questionable. How's my mycoid colossus, by the way? How are you doing? Dispersing spores in 85 days. Oh, that doesn't sound very good. Can we install anything into you? And then, of course, eventually what I really want is machinery making bionics automatically. Maybe try and get two of each bionic in storage. So that way, if we feel like, oh, I guess four legs for the... Anyway, you know what I'm getting at. Um, that way we can just very quickly, if we see an animal that we want, say, for example, I don't know, a roving trader sells a thrombo. We take a thrombo, we, we biology, bi, bio, bio mechanize it. Bio mechanize it. Any questions? Oh, Blue Incorporation. Please don't be drop pods. Arrive nearby. Oh, thank God. Uh, it's Shari's niece. Shari's niece. Oh my God, there's a lot of them. Oh, fucking look at this technology they've got. Oh, wow. Um, we're looking at antimatter weaponry and armor. We are looking at gorse rifles. We're looking at miniguns. We're looking at pet centipedes. Pet centipedes. That's fine. Uh, crafting bot, you might want to haul your little ass out of there, my brother. Otherwise, you are dead as all dicks. Run. Oh, God. No, it's horrible. It's like Watership Down. Run, little crafting bot. The Combine Harvest is coming. He's dead. Okay. Let's see if our shredded turrets can actually actively deal with this. Now, we do have our ace in the hole. We do have our... Our sort of contingency plan, that of course being our artillery strikes. Now, artillery strikes are 3,000, what is it, 3,000, 4,000 gold apiece. So it is going to take a massive chunk out of our silver. Would suck, especially if we need more tech prints for the Beyond Our Understanding thing. If we find any exotic goods traders that sell the spawners, we don't want to miss out on that. So, see how this goes. Poor little crafting bot, dead as all dicks. Oh, smoke pop. Might work in our favor, arguably. 
Let's see how it goes. Kill that, kill that grenade here. Please kill him dead. Headshot with a fucking shredder turret and he just walked it off. Oh, God. Thank God we built this out of uranium. More importantly, thank God we built that in Embrasure. Because that soaked up a lot of the damage there. Okay. They're getting to the middle of the kill box. If we're going to use this, now's the time to do it. It's 3,000. Oh, look at this. Did you see that? It was like a brief radius. Uh, you can kind of see it from when we're zooming in and out. Um, but it's massive. It's bigger than our... It's actually bigger than our kill box. Shit. Um, these guys are anti-mechanoid, aren't they? We could send in the clowns. Let's see how it's. Go Let's see how we do. We need a good basis for. Oh, we're fine. Really, nothing to worry about. I'm glad I kind of held off there a second, and we finished the uranium slug turrets. Ideally, I want that centipede killed so that we can hack it. Ideally, that's fine. That's okay. Take out a few more. Oh, we got some survivors here too. We've got Virgica McConvarg. Uh, heat lover, tea teller, sexual ascetic, capable of dumb labor. You're on the chopping block, my friend. Uh, or to be honest, any of these people are good for our chopping block in the form of our radiation therapy. Let's go get ourselves some friends. Some nice new volunteers. Man, these things are coming in, aren't they? These Zio ports. Like our boys being able to just grab straight from them. So we're at 553 out of the steel that we need right now. Don't know where this other steel has ended up then. Must be in another one of the Io ports. Ah, oh, over by the turrets, of course. Yeah, that's uh, that should be a much higher priority one at the end of the day. Mainly because without the turrets, we can't survive. Like, we'll fucking die horribly. So maybe I should make this one... Or, or maintain this one as higher priority, even though it's a little less convenient for them to obviously haul this stuff over. Eventually, it's not going to be an issue, because when we get two plasma drills, we've got double our production on steel and whatever else. But their apparel is getting recycled. That's quite nice. And obviously, that's going to become pretty... Pretty prominent as we throw more and more people into the fucking meat grinder. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Look at that. So they are loading that directly into there. So what we really need is an input IO here to save the hauling bots going such a such a distance. And in fact, they could dump people in this and well, first we need to get the fucking boar out of there. Uh we've got that that is that the same rotten boar that was in here for about twelve episodes. Get out of here. We need like a dumping stockpile. Hang on. Um yeah. The cursed dumping stockpile. Let's go clear all Actually, no, let's just allow... Yeah, yeah, clear all, critical, and then only allow rotten. Because, realistically, we want the human corpses to either uh, vivisect for... for Well, obviously, not vivisect if they're dead. Uh, dissect for bionics, or, alternatively, we just want to eat them, eat them, eat them dead. Let's put another IO port in here, then, just for kind of speeding things up a little bit extra. So it's... Oh, fuck, my bad. It's me <laughs> altering that before we've actually built the damn thing. There we go. Fully automated plasma drill production. This is the dream right there. And then, of course, putting them there means that they can all hook up to the same output there, too. Can I just copy the bills over? Uh, no. <laughs> That's annoying. Um, yeah, we, we can't just... Uh, can I copy them one at a time? Uh, oh, we can. Okay, we can't copy all, which is a bit of a shame, but that's alright. Our six particle accelerators are finished. Uh, we haven't got a floor, so we're still working on that one. Uh, I am put down two of the alloy fusion machines now. We've got 32 antimatter. We need something to do with it. So hopefully this will allow us to make the antimatter alloy again. If we build turrets out of that, they're going to be invincible. Doesn't matter if they turn up with anti-massive grenades. Well, it actually might in hindsight. Um, but we'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll see how much more hit points we're looking at there. We've got two more plasma drills being planned out there too. I don't think we'll need any more particle accelerators. Um, we might want to put down a specific extra building for future particle accelerators if we need any more. This is taking him a while, but we are almost up to the Vulcan cannon. Ooh, very large batteries. That sounds pretty good. Um... We are almost up to the production of Vulcan cannons. It's taken them a couple of days because it's quite a hefty research. Uh, the tragic thing is I've just basically finished the fucking kill box changes, so now I'm going to have to redo it all. Thank you for that. Um, we could swap out some of these top layer... Because the Vulcan cannons have a pretty mad range from what I remember. Vulcan cannon... Let's go ahead and make some uranium Vulcan cannons then. Uh, it's 500 steel, 600 uranium. Fucking hell. Wow. Um, fortified minigun tower that fires continuously. Very durable, but power hungry. So, they've got a massive range of them, as you can see. In fact, if we put them kind of like here, I think they've got the perfect range at that point. So, maybe swap out these top two turret emplacements. So, get rid of, like, these ones. And then swap them out for a Vulcan. We won't need many of those, because, again, they are they are going to be pretty devastating. That's changed my output settings now for 600 uranium on that one. And then we're still out of steel, correct? My god, what is going on? We just have no steel. Oh, they've just finished building this one. That's why. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Let's go ahead and swing that one around. Um, and then I've I've, in, I've changed the steel bill as well. Uh, or at least I fucking thought I had. Did it not copy over properly? Uh, eh? 
<laughs> I did change this steel bell. I promise I changed it to 3,000 and then 1,000 instead. Um, I wonder if it's where... Because this is slightly buggy with Dubsmint's menus. Dubsmint Dubs menus. Um, makes it a little harder to manage some of the bills here because we can't just directly copy them over or we can't copy linked bills, for example. Um, so we've got that one over there now set to 3,000, 1,000. I'll go ahead and do that with the rest of them. Oh, I see the issue. You fucking fool. How was... Wait, how has that happened? <laughs> okay, the, this is there's something horribly wrong with with some of the menus, uh, with, with some of the menu management because you know what, fucking remove the high grade steel. It's only useful for those power plants, and we're already way past that anyway. Let's go ahead and. Hmm. Oh, it's because it's too long for the bar. There you go. Okay, so I have accidentally also done it with high grade steel, but again, we'll remove that. And again, look, I can't do things like reorder the bills. So concrete's going to come always above steel, which I'm not too pleased about. And the only other thing I need to do is crank up the power usage on that drill there. There we go. Oh, that's looking a lot better. Fantastic. And in no time, they're going to have enough to finish off this drill as well. And then I'll have to apply, obviously, the same thing to that. Although they're already on it. Fantastic. Okay. So let's get down some... Oh, lack of power. Lack of power. La massive lack of power. What the fuck? How much do these drain? 10,000 watts apiece. I shouldn't be surprised that we've got a lack of power. Okay. Um, the antimatter generator is... The antimatter reactor is offline. Shit. And what do we need for that? A thousand concrete. Um, well, surely we've got enough concrete to finish that. We're not doing anything else with the walls. I mean, there's that little divot up here that needs sorting out. Uh, that should deter any sappers now. We've got a four block thick wall around the entire edge of the base. I'll reinforce it on the outside wall with maybe some of that antimatter alloy when we get up to that stage. Um, ooh, okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and disable that for the time being then. We're not that desperate for steel that we want, like, kind of rolling brownouts there. How are we looking? Is that better? Have we done it, Patrick? Have we saved the city? Uh, sort of. When when, the, when these come back online, it might just about keep us afloat. I had to say, I'm going to turn off the particle accelerators for a little while. Oh, hang on. This is online. We could just go ahead and set the output to a lot higher, right? Um, change power level to big boy power. There we are. Problem solved. Nothing to worry about. Uh, but how much is that going to swallow up, though? So 13 out of 20 is enough for 3.3 days. Oh, no. That's quite expensive. Especially when these things only make one, what, two canisters per day. Oh, in hindsight. Yeah, we've got enough to keep that fueled. There's nothing to worry about. Right, let's go ahead and churn these right back up to maximum power again. Oh, prosthesis trader. What have we got? Uh, advanced Barnic Jaw for the animals. Couldn't hurt. Well, no, we, uh, we want to stick to the medical expander system, don't we, rather than expanded prosthetics and organ engineering. I suppose for the animals, though. Although I do want to give Wojtek a minigun. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't. There's just something about a, a tobacco-smoking golden eye polar bear rocking up with a minigun on his back that's far more appealing. So, you know, we'll put that off for the time. What, what, one of my robots is broken. Uh, which one? Crafting robot's dead. Well, not that we really need to rely on the crafting robots anymore. We need hyper components for the fusion reactors. Oh, shit. So we have to defeat raiders to do that. Because there's no other way to make those, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, okay. Um, that's an interesting system of balance. I genuinely do quite like that uh, as an idea. It means that just now that we've got crazy amounts of power, crazy amounts of resources, we still can't just skip straight forward to the end game. We still have to fight these guys. That's quite fun. Um, right, so we want to take a look at what, brain implants. Okay, I wasn't going to say brain implants, but that's fine. Um, I was going to say I want to take a look at which mod adds these. Yeah, medical system expansion revived. That is what we're after right there. Um, fuck it. Cue the whole lot up. Look at the amount of research we're throwing into this. Exoskeleton suits, advanced bionic spines. Yeah, this is fine. Just just go for the whole thing. These are very, very early game research. So he's absolutely going to fly through these, especially with all these other bonus research giving machinery we've got kicking around here. There you go, little robots. Have yourselves some tasty little paved floors at long last. I figured we might as well start turning this into an actual factory rather than just a kind of shed with... An empire sustaining amount of machinery in a shed with an antimatter reactor surrounded by sweet, sweet drugs. Okay, let's um maybe change tactic a little bit on that one. I, I still want the drug production, but we're far beyond just crops growing in soil on the ground like some sort of fucking caveman. Let's start working on some pure, tasty robo drugs. Uh, What am I looking for here? Doors? Structure? I assume they're still under? Perfect. Let's start swapping them out for auto doors as well because we've still got auto doors absolutely everywhere in its cities. Um, I guess aluminium auto doors would be the most... Effective, right? And let's make sure we've got at least two doors on each structure for speed-related reasons. Um, I assume we can get rid of that. I assume we can get rid of, of, of the solar panels now, right? They're probably a little bit old hat at this stage. Um, let's go ahead and add a couple of there, too. Uh, these ones are ready, but we'll go ahead and swap those out as well. Perfect. And you get an auto door there. 
It's a little bit going against my making sure that we've got two doors on each one, but that's all right. The reason for doing that as well is so that it's not horribly laggy when you've got many things trying to pathfind around one another at all points. Oh, shit. D wait, Division H, they're the ones that drop the grandfather of Shari, great-grandfather of Lady. These are the ones that drop the hyper components, are they not? What the fuck is that? Is that a Goliath that they've strapped a flamethrower onto? That's awesome, if not a little bit frightening. This guy's already downed. Overdose, I assume? Drug overdose major. Well, that saves us one less uh, one less corpse we have to deal with there. And have these guys got bionics and things like that? Hang on, let's take a look here. Health, bonnet legs. Targeting hacked, running on... Oh, that's the mechanoid. That's quite cool. Bionic eyes. Yeah, these are the guys. I'm really hoping they also are the ones that drop the... I'm, I'm almost certain they're the ones that drop the components, right? Hang on, we've got... We've got remote explosive charges just kicking around here. Let's go ahead and put those... I mean, in the kill box is kind of a final layer of defense. If we put them here, would would definitely be a massive help. Now we finally got something to test our kill box against. We didn't get the Vulcan cannons done just because they were so prohibitively expensive while we're working on so much other shit too. Um, must not be under a roof. Oh, identical blueprint exists here. You're incorrect. Oh, 100% incorrect there. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of these roofs then. They're spread out quite significantly too. Their numbers are massively, massively staggered and it means our... Our turrets are going to really come into their own here. Why are they so... Some of them are so slow. This has worked out really, really well. Honestly, this giant wall around the map has, has had some extra benefits I've never previously considered for. We've essentially turned the entire map into one big kill box. Because they're so heavily stacked now. We could even go as far to put mud along sections of this. So that those with the walking speed bonuses are going to get really far ahead. Okay, let's see how it goes then. Scullywags, I imagine, are going to get... Yeah, absolutely annihilated. Pepper drone got completely peppered. And then we've got Galena Baker. Galena Baker, I want your... What is that? Karambit. Someone's been playing too much CSGO. Have you got any... Uh, excuse me, brother. Have you got any hyper components? Oh, two. Come on. Three. Or oh, was that the same one? That's the same one. Don't, don't, don't worry. Oh, my God. Our turrets are destroying our walls. Wow, that was a massacre. Holy shit. Now, obviously, we can't adjust the difficulty of Wave Survival. So, if you guys want to vote on if things get too easy, uh, feel free to do that at any point. If you see another comment saying it's too easy, upvote that, and I will adjust the difficulty depending on that. But we've got three hyper components. Now, as I recall, we already have three, so we can definitely build one of our alloy fusion machines. Phenomenal. Big fan of that. Right, get to work. Uh, Robert Daddy, have we got anyone we can capture for experimental reasons? Six hours, uh, four hours there, five hours, two hours. Two conditions need tending. We've got two prisoners guaranteed. Let's go capture Sissy as well, because I feel like we can get over there through the choke grass, get him into the prison in time to be able to tend them. Never mind, they're fucking dead. Okay. <laughs> um, 23 hours. Yefim G Galipsy. Capture, capture Yefim Galipsy. Oh, uh, fuck. Fleeing in panic. You fool. That's my prisoners just shot even more. What? What are you doing? Get out of here. Oh, the mechanoids don't surrender. I mean, that would make some sense. Oh, shit. Are there any others coming in? No, I think we're good now. Yeah, I think that's everything. Wait, did they actually irradiate Shari? Because I just checked his health. I, well, firstly, I checked this thing. And it said last mutation, cancer six days ago. And then I took a look at him. He's got brain mutation. Hearing, sight, consciousness. Left shoulder is volatile. He's got two enhanced lungs. A bloated heart. Makes vomit. Well, what's a bloated heart do? 150%. I'm pretty sure having an enlarged heart is generally a terrible thing medically. What the hell do I know? He's got a super speed leg. Moving plus 50%. Ooh. Uh, volatile left hand, uh, and it's gone rotten. Uh, and he's also got a green thumb that gives eight plant. Wait, eight bonus to his plant skill. You're kidding me. It fucking is as well. What? Uh, hack these bits off, please. Um, so the brain mutation, is that good? It is good. So let's harvest his lungs. <laughs> oh my god, this is premium war crimes. We hit him with all sorts of experimental radiation. Obviously, I've got to try and do it so that we see it happen. I forgot that I set it up for him. I didn't know that he would just volunteer to basically have it done himself. We need to do this and see what we can we can pull off with it. Um, right, so we want both of his lungs. Cool. His heart, I suppose, is technically a good thing. So we might as well go and grab that one too. I'm hoping if we... Yeah, see, the left leg has cancer, but the right leg's fine. So let's harvest the right leg. Um... And then I guess the right hand for the green thumb is pretty good. Right hand. Uh, so we've got just to double check here. And then, of course, we need the brain mutation, but we'll leave that till last. So we've got two lungs, which is fantastic. The bloated heart, which is apparently a good thing. We've got one super speed leg. The other one, unfortunately, is not usable. And then we've got the right hand, which is good. And then finally, we'll take the brain. Thank you, Shari. Much appreciated, my friend. More to the point. Can we now build... Oh, yes. Okay. 
Uh, I assume one of the robots is coming over to kind of deal with it. Oh, to be fair, I did put down all these paid floors, so that's going to take them some time. You're tending to Dawson. Well, after Robo Daddy's done tending, tending to my man Dawson, we'll head over and get the alloy synthesis done, and then we might be able to finally do something with this crazy amount of antimatter we've got. We need more antimatter composite. Well, 150. How do we get antimatter composite besides recycling their weapons? That's what we. That's how we've gotten all of this stuff is from the. Recycler grabbing the resources that like I said, this one's hooked up to the weapons apparel The reason I've got that as a separate stat by the way someone asked why I'm not just putting it all in one big Unit is because we want that constantly empty It's a lot harder to find if we've got spare weapons and apparel and a, a giant thing with 144 stacks rather than just a separate one for it This one has fecal sludge steel slag remote detonators That's for building strengths and waste like I said so really nothing we can do with those unless you want to refine it uh, And then this one is backup just in case we happen to fill this thing. But it's mainly this thing that we're using for... This can basically handle everything besides a few select categories there. And now, my friends, for your patience in allowing me to set up this... This resource generation and auto-crafting areas. I will... I will reward you all with... A sexy robot wife or robo-daddy. Now, this one's just going to be the basic love droid that disables most of their... Most of their jobs. It, it won't do anything... They won't be able to do anything. They're not massively skilled here. But we can, uh, let's go ahead and add some traits. Now, apparently adding traits is free. It just affects how long they take to print. So the sooner we start work on this, the better. Um, we want beautiful, if you don't mind, seeing as it is a love bot. We want, uh, movement speed. So jogger. And we want hard worker. Oh, no. I mean, quite literally in this situation. Fine. Let's go industrious. Um, it's going to take how long? Five days, 12 hours. Fuck. Um, is there anything else we really want to add to a love bot kind? Because they search out relationships. So I guess we'll go with that one too. Um, anything that will make them more appealing to Robo Daddy. Uh, that's basically it as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, we should probably throw in bisexual as well. I don't know if that affects robots, but I think that's probably the safest bet. Um, you first identity idle model, pleasure model. Excellent. And then, what else have you got for me? Um, what would, what, which of these would be appropriate? Court, courtesan? Uh, entertainer. Yeah, 15 social. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. That's fine. Um, physique. Does this matter? I don't think any of this matters if they're just going to... We've got to put a black box in it, though. There we are. Uh, installing usually recon androids, which, in criti which is critical. They do not leave witnesses when they get critically wounded. Probably the ultimate retribution tool. Basically, if the waifu gets damaged, she'll explode. With with nuclear power. I'm in. Uh, so that's going to cost 16 advanced components, 150 plastic, 20 meat, and 6 days. Perfect. And they'll make a combat waifu for him afterwards. Somebody capable of using all these crazy weapons and armor and whatnot. Um, that way he can just... We'll keep the pleasure droid just permanently in his bedroom. And then the combat waifu will use as a kind of second inverted commas colonist to... Allow us to do things like obviously put him in size sleep and, and do some of those... Like operate on him, for example, will obviously be quite kind of a large one. Um... Sure, I'm happy with that. Are we good to print? Let's print. So we need 20 nutrition, 150 plastic, and 16 advanced components. I'm assuming we can do that straight away, right? Uh, where, brother, is the category for... Yeah, 32 advanced components. We are more than good. Robo Daddy, build her. Build the wife. Making her out of corn, human meat. <laughs> yeah, what well, all good wife is about of corn and human meat. 72 plastil down, and now for the 16 advanced components, and she's printing. Tomorrow, my friends, the thing you've all been waiting for, the waifu production will be complete. Thank you all for watching. A great episode all around, really. We, we've got our defenses shored up incredibly nicely. We've got our production going in full blast. We've got two new particle accelerators. We've got antimatter and power going completely nuts. I'm happy with this one. Thank you to Ninja Tree V, Zulu, Scott, Chase, Slippy Nips, Aromatic Fool, Kyle, Jackson Whitman, James Shea, Iguana Squad, Peyton Denisar, Surik 3 and 3, Zetlock, Zazzy 7011, Alchemia and Nostros for their support over at the insane tier levels on Patreon. Big thank you to these guys for going to that highest tier of support for the channel over on patreon.com slash whatever. I don't know. Don't ask me. I, I don't do marketing. Thank you as well to Gaz, Betamus Max, Dranmir, Derek F, Llewellyn Thomas, Smirtworm, Rob Girth, Spirelli, Demon, Sir Tool the Swede. Sir Tool the Swede? That was not correct, but I'm going with it. Fat Joe is a toe, Peanut Gorilla, Jeebus Crust, Dion, Live Forever, Pod, Lucio, La Tempe, Nick, and of course, all the other patrons for their sport over at patreon.com slash, again, whatever. I don't know. You'll have to look it up yourself. I'm not into marketing here.